Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm so glad uh, to stand before you to say that we have just crossed 50k subscribers. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Uh, so those who haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and uh, please support this channel so that I will be uh, feeling motivated to do more, more and more uh, videos. Now, in this session, from this session onwards, I'm planning to talk about uh, cerebrum. It's one of the most important topics as far as UGPG, everyone is concerned. And you know, cerebrum, you will get a lot of questions, be it in theory or be it in viva. Uh, so, uh, mostly I will be focusing on the suprolateral surface, medial surface, the functional areas and the applied aspects of cerebrum. Okay, so this you can consider it as part one cerebrum. Okay. Uh, so before mo we move on to uh, the cerebrum proper, the functional areas proper, you should know how the cerebrum is divided into lobes, what are the main sulci, what are the main gyri, all these things you should know before we move on with the functional areas proper. Okay, uh, so we know that human brain is highly sophisticated and it is really convoluted and such a feature where you get many gyri the convolutions and the depressions uh, the sulci so the convoluted structure of cerebrum uh, which you see in higher mammals you call it as gyrencephalic okay so the term gyrencephalic means you have the brain fo folded into many folds and that appearance you call it as gyrencephalic but in some animals like lower mammals the birds reptiles all these animals you will get the brain smooth smooth just like this okay without any sulci and gyri you call such type of cerebrum as lysencephalic okay so these are the two types of cerebrum according to the convolutions and uh, one important thing is during development what happens is the cerebrum will be just like uh, uh, an elongated uh, structure with an anterior end and a posterior end and in course of time what happens is uh, this uh, structure will get convoluted in order to get accommodated into the cranial cavity because the cranial cavity is a fixed cavity right so the brain should be folded on itself so, so that it will get accommodated into the cranial cavity that is how you uh, you get this posterior end shifted a bit anteriorly why I am stressing like this is in the beginning uh, when we talk about the cerebrum we call we have three poles you know that this rounded end is the frontal pole the posterior pole is known as occipital pole and one more pole is there just below the frontal pole that is the temporal pole so during development in the early period the temporal pole was actually at the posterior end and uh, due to the development of the brain into many uh, foldings so as to accommodate into the cranial cavity the temporal pole gets fo uh, folded on itself to come anteriorly that is how the temporal pole is now seen anteriorly and uh, the occipital pole is seen posteriorly so when we talk about cerebrum we know that there are two cerebral hemispheres this is one cerebral hemisphere you have one more cerebral hemisphere uh, on the right side so these two cerebral hemispheres are connected to each other by a bundle of white matter that is known as corpus callosum. So when we cut the corpus callosum, you will you can separate the two cerebral hemispheres. Uh, so corpus callosum, I have done a video on it. If you want to have uh, a look at it, please go and see it. Uh, so that's about the uh, development and how uh, you get the three poles the frontal pole the occipital pole which is now seen posteriorly and the temporal pole which is uh, now lying just below the frontal pole now uh, what are the borders and what are the main surfaces if you consider this as one cerebral hemisphere we, we can call this as this bulged air region, the convex region. You can call this as superolateral surface. Okay, this is known as superolateral surface. And the one which is flat, almost flat and which is facing the opposite cerebral hemisphere, you can call this as medial surface and the lower portion you call it as inferior surface. Okay, so superolateral surface which is seen in relation with the cranial vault then the medial surface which is seen in relation with the opposite cerebral hemisphere and the inferior surface which is seated in the anterior and middle cranial fossa okay so this these are the three main surfaces so we now till now we discussed about the three main poles these are the three main surfaces and the three important borders are 
superiorly you have only one border this is actually superior and this is more towards the median plane so you can call this as superomedial border okay now inferiorly it is almost flat isn't it so it has got two borders one medially and one laterally so you can call this as inframedial border and this you can call it as inferolateral border so these are the three borders superomedial border inframedial border which is lying medially and inferolateral border which is lying laterally so altogether we have three poles we have three surfaces and we have three borders for a cerebral hemisphere and these two cerebral hemispheres are connected by corpus callosum a bundle of white matter uh, now and when we look at the two poles the anterior pole or the frontal pole is somewhat rounded and the posterior pole is actually somewhat tapering that is the occipital pole now uh, most most of the time when i ask the students about the different lobes of cerebral hemisphere most of them say frontal parietal occipital temporal are there any other lobes other than these you should know about two more lobes which you should include when you are asked about the cerebral lobes okay so they are the insular or the central lobe and one more lobe is there that is the limbic lobe so these are the six lobes of cerebral hemisphere okay frontal parietal occipital temporal uh, the insular or central lobe and the limbic lobe if you happen to write all these lobes we will give you full marks or uh, most of the time students end up saying only the four lobes okay so please bear that point in mind so there are six lobes uh, then um, what are the main sulci you get in the cerebral hemisphere the main sulci or the important sulci means which are usually seen constantly uh, when you take whichever cerebral hemisphere okay whereas the other sulci may differ from brain uh, from different uh, from person to person okay so which are the main four sulci which you should remember they are you have the central sulcus of rolando the lateral sulcus of sylvius the uh, parieto occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus okay so these are the four sulci you should remember when you talk about uh, the cerebral hemisphere once again the central sulcus of rolando the lateral sulcus of sylvius parieto occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus okay and out of these four sulci when you talk about the suprolateral surface today in the session uh, we are mainly concentrating on the suprolateral surface okay in this surface the two important sulci which you can make out are uh, the, this is the central sulcus and this is the lateral sulcus okay the central sulcus this is the lateral sulcus and this is the central sulcus uh, whereas uh, the parieto occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus which are uh, are mainly seen prominently from the medial surface okay so out of the four sulci from the suprolateral aspect you can see the central sulcus and you can see the lateral sulcus whereas the calcarine and the parieto occipital sulcus are seen more clearly from the medial surface okay uh so uh, these are the ma major important sulci uh now uh, when you talk about the area of the cerebral hemisphere due to the convolutions uh, though the total area comes to about 2000 cm square only uh, one third of it is uh, actually visualized when you just have a look at the cerebral hemisphere whereas the remaining area is actually hidden in the sulci okay so when you just spread the cerebrum as a sheet Uh, the total surface area will account to about 2000 cm square out of which only one third of it is visible to you uh, in the form of the projections of the uh, gyri okay the rest of it is actually folded and folded and kept inside the sulci uh, now uh, imagine you are going to dig the cerebral hemisphere you are uh, just like digging a well what are the structures which you will come across one after the other If you start digging from the sup uh, suprolateral surface, first thing you wish you will come about, uh, come around will be the cerebral cortex. After that, what will you get? So we will start digging. First, uh, you will see the cerebral cortex. After that, what is the next structure which you will see? Of course, you will be seeing the white matter. Okay, so it is just like digging a well. So you will be seeing the white matter. 
After the white matter, uh, what happens when you dig a well? After the many layers of soil, you will get some uh, rocks or pebbles, right? So that is equal to the basal ganglia or basal nuclei, the cortical matter which you get in the white matter. That is the basal ganglia or basal nuclei. And even and uh, if you go on digging further, you will see water just like a well. That is our lateral ventricle. Okay, so the CSF in the lateral ventricle. This is what happens if you just go on drilling the cerebral hemisphere from lateral surface to the medial surface. You will get the cerebral cortex, then you get the white matter, then you get some of the basal nuclei and again if you go deeper, you will end up in the lateral ventricle which is the cavity of the cerebral hemisphere with the CSF. Now uh, we are moving on to uh, divide the uh, cerebral hemisphere into lobes. So we, we have already discussed about six lobes of cerebral hemisphere. They are the frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, insular or central lobe, central lobe and the limbic lobe. Out of these six lobes, the five lobes we can make out from the suprolateral surface. Whereas limbic lobe we can make out from the medial surface. So limbic lobe we will discuss when we uh, discuss the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Uh, the remaining uh, five cerebral lobes we can make out from this. Okay. Uh, so uh, before we move on di uh, discussing the cerebral lobes, we need to know how this is divided, how the cerebral uh, hemisphere is divided into lobes based on what? So it is based on the important sulci which you come across on the suprolateral surface. So let's see which are the important sulci going to divide the cerebral hemisphere into different lobes. The first and foremost is the central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus. So how will you identify the central sulcus? You have the cerebral hemisphere in your hand. The first and foremost thing which you have to look for is you identify the longest sulci on the suprolateral surface. So you will come across two or three important uh, long sulci. The next thing which you have to make out is you trace the longer sulci and see whether it is going or extending onto the medial surface. If the sulci is extending onto the medial surface, then it is the central sulcus. So the longest sulci, a sulcus which is seen on the suprolateral surface, you just trace it and if it is dipping onto the medial surface, that is the central sulcus. And normally speaking, the position of the central sulcus is, if you consider uh, the midpoint of the uh, distance between the fr frontal pole and the occipital pole, it is actually, if, if you consider this as the midpoint, between the frontal and the occipital pole, it is actually 1 centimeter uh, behind, 1 centimeter behind the midpoint of the frontal pole and the occipital pole. That is the position of the central sulcus and it is seen uh, going down and anteriorly. Uh, so uh, the central sulcus will be actually making an angle of 70 degree. So imagine my pen as the central sulcus. So from the supramedial border, it will go down and anteriorly. So with the median plane, it will just make 70 degree. Okay, it will make 70 degree with the median sagittal plane. That is how we say about the central sulcus. So look for the longest sulcus which you can make out on the supralateral surface and um, you just try whether it is going towards the medial aspect. If it is going onto the medial aspect, that is the central sulcus. The position is actually uh, one centimeter behind the midpoint between the frontal and the occipital pole. The next important sulcus is uh, the lateral sulcus of Sylvius. Lateral sulcus of Sylvius. And this you can see going posteriorly. Okay, so this is the lateral sulcus and it ends in the parietal lobe. This is the parietal lobe. Okay, uh, so that is the lateral sulcus. So when you talk about the lateral sulcus, you imagine a stem uh, and it has got three rami. Okay, three rami and the stem. These are the different parts of the lateral sulcus. Okay, so this region is known as the stem of the lateral sulcus and this is dividing into three rami. This is known as the anterior horizontal because it is going anti this is the frontal pole isn't it so it is going anteriorly and it is horizontal the next ramus is anterior and it's going up 
so you call it as anterior ascending and this is which is going backwards this is the posterior ramus so these are the three rami of lateral sulcus and this initial part is known as the stem of the lateral sulcus uh, now the anterior horizontal and anterior ascending they are roughly 2.5 centimeters whereas the posterior ramus which is extending up to the parietal lobe that is the that is about 7.5 centimeters in length you have to remember uh, the measurements of that too uh, then you can actually locate the uh, rami now the next important point which you should know in, or, in order to uh, differentiate the lobes is uh, the parieto occipital sulcus you can see a portion of the parieto occipital sulcus here isn't it uh, the major portion of the parieto occipital sulcus is actually lying on the medial surface and in the lower part you can see a pre occipital notch okay so parieto occipital sulcus and the pre occipital notch so these are the different four important points which you should know when you are going to divide the cerebral hemisphere now what you should do we have to connect these points the central sulcus of course it is meeting the uh, posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus you can see the central sulcus going down and it is meeting the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus now you are going to draw an imaginary line connecting the parieto occipital sulcus uh, with the pre occipital notch this dotted line is the first imaginary line now we need one more imaginary line that is actually connecting the posterior ramus posterior ramus before it turns up you are going to connect it or extrapolate it to the first imaginary line which you have already drawn okay so that will give you uh, a cerebral hemisphere with mainly four lobes which are the four lobes which you get now you have the frontal lobe you have the parietal lobe, you have the occipital lobe and you have the temporal lobe. So uh, let's see uh, how you uh, define the boundaries of the frontal lobe. How will you define the boundaries of the frontal lobe? It lies between the frontal pole and the central sulcus. And inferiorly, you can see the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. How will you define the parietal lobe? It lies anteriorly, you have the central sulcus then inferiorly you have the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus which is extended to the first imaginary line and posteriorly you have the upper part portion of the first imaginary line well, how will you describe the occipital pole uh, or, or the occipital lobe it is actually lying behind the first imaginary line connecting the parieto occipital sulcus and the pre occipital notch that is the occipital lobe and how will you define the temporal lobe superiorly you have the posterior ramus and the dotted line extending to the first imaginary line posteriorly you have the lower portion of the first imaginary line and anteriorly you have the temporal pole so this is the temporal lobe so we discussed about the four important lobes uh, so we mentioned that uh, we can see one more lobe from the superolateral surface isn't it so which is the one more lobe which you can see from the superolateral surface that is nothing but the central lobe or insula uh, when you talk about insula it means the hidden lobe so where are you go going to look for the hidden lobe if you separate if uh, this is the lateral sulcus right if you just separate the lateral sulcus that grew if you look into that sulcus you will see a triangular cortical matter and that is known as insula or central lobe i'm not showing it here uh, we will do it another session exclusively for the insula so this is the portion where you have to, you have to just uh, separate the lips of the lateral sulcus in order to see the insula or the central lobe uh, so this uh, is actually known as the opercula the uh, the lips which close the insula so what are the opercula uh, or how is this opercula formed it is formed by the frontal lobe it is formed fr by the parietal lobe and it is formed by the temporal lobe so fronto parieto temporal opercula they will actually come closer like lips and it will actually hide the central or insular lobe that is how the insula is kept hidden in the lateral sulcus. Now, 
the next thing which we are going to do is we have we are going to divide uh, the lobes into uh, subdivisions okay so the importance of dividing all these uh, lobes further again and again is uh, the easiest way to locate the functional areas that is the reason why i decided to uh, divide the lobes and then uh, decided to uh, say about the functional areas or else it will be uh, difficult for you to understand the different lobes and uh, uh, the different regions when i start explaining uh, the functional areas okay uh, so in this session we have seen uh, about uh, the different surfaces of the cerebral hemisphere we have seen the different borders of the cerebral hemisphere and uh, we, ha we have also seen uh, the different poles of the cerebral hemisphere now uh, we mentioned about the four important sulci uh, the central sulcus of Rolando the lateral sulcus of Sylvius uh, the parieto occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus out of which the two important sulcus sulci which you are seeing from the supralateral surfaces uh, the central sulcus and the lateral sulcus with the help of this we are going to divide the supralateral surface into four lobes the frontal lobe the parietal lobe uh, the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe in the next session uh, uh, we will be discussing about uh, the subdivisions of the lobes how uh, and, uh, other minor sulci are going to divide the lobes into different regions so thank you for watching uh, keep watching uh, for further sessions Thank you so much.